Good morning. Running a little behind today. Um, I know I say this and explain it every week, but I'm going to do it again. Um, Monday mornings, our elders and pastors meet um, at 6.30 for our weekly elders meeting and um, talk about uh, prayer needs for our body and other things happening. And um, because of the way we've been doing sermons over the, over the last while, actually, um, we have, we've not been reading our scriptures, um, for the following Sunday as much as, as much as I would certainly like to, as much as we have in the past. Um, but this week we spent time in, uh, Genesis chapter one reading together and it was awesome. Um, we, we had such a good conversation and I was reminded why I, um, why I really like that. And I was reminded wh why I... I miss it when we don't do it, um, but we had, um, we just had an awesome, we just had an awesome time of conversation this morning, um, and I have, I have missed doing that, so, um, so it was a good conversation talking about um, what's happening in our body and what's happening in scripture. Um, so good morning to uh, Lori and the other Lori, uh, my friend Stacy yesterday, um, from Minnesota. You've seen her on here a few times. Her and her husband, Carl, um, were actually in, in Scotts Bluff, uh, came, came to, um, our building yesterday morning, driving through from, uh, from Colorado. And, uh, it was cool because they got to meet the other Lori. Um, that's Lori Reynolds. Um, cause usually Lori Smith is the first person on. So they got to meet the other Lori and it was cool seeing them, uh, interact and have that connection yesterday and point that out. Um, so good morning to Lori and the other Lori. Good morning to Charlotte from Kansas and Deanna also from Minnesota, uh, to Roseanne and Carol. Um, hope you all, you hope you are all off to a good, um, a good morning so far. Um, we are, we are beginning today. Um, uh, actually we're not beginning. We've been talking about the church at Philippi. Um, last week we spent, um, we spent the week going through Acts chapter 16, uh, laying that foundation for, um, for the church, um, in, in Philippi. So today we are, um, we're starting out, um, just really simply, we're going to read the first two verses of Philippians chapter one, um, and we'll have a conversation about it and then we'll, pray. Um, so if you have your Bible, I would love for you to open it to, um, to Philippians chapter 1 um, so we can read. Um, it says, this letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to all of God's holy people at, in Philippi who belong to Christ Jesus, including the church leaders and deacons. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and and peace. So I love, like, you know, we tend to think that, um, that Paul was the only one writing these letters. And here in the very first verse of Philippians, we read that Paul had a helper. Um, and this was not uncommon to Paul's other letters. Um, I don't remember which, um, I don't remember which episode of the Bible Project podcast, um, it was, um, but it was, I think it was back it was back during the fall, but they talked about how, how the Bible, how letters were written, um, especially like New Testament letters, especially letters written by Paul and apparently here um, also Timothy. Um, and the way they talked about it was we tend to, you know, we typically think like Paul was, Paul was tucked away in a room somewhere with a little lamp and he's, and he's writing all of these things out. Um, writes it all at one time, and then sends it out. And the reality of it is that's probably not how it was written. Um, most of Paul's letters were, pro were, were likely written um, by a community of writers, um, by multiple people um, talking about things and bringing things together. And um, we have a sense of that here in Philippians with, with the very first thing that Paul writes. He says he's writing to all of God's holy people who belong to Christ Jesus, including, I like that, 
um, including the church leaders um, and the deacons. Sometimes, um, as, as Christians, um, we tend to categorize uh, one another. Um, I know that in my time as a pastor, I've had, I've had people say things, um, say things to me like, um, I'm going to ask you as a pastor to pray for me because, um, like, because I'm closer to God. Um, you're, I have a more direct, I have a more direct line is what I've heard, um, people tell me. I've had, I've had people insinuate like I'm somehow closer to God because I because I'm a pastor, and my prayers matter more than um, than what their prayers do or than what the prayers of like a regular Christian do, and like I just want to just categorically say that that's not true, and I think we have a sense of that here. Um, Paul is Paul is writing to the church. At Philippi to all of God's people, some of whom happen to be church leaders and deacons. So this applies to all of us, or all of them, I should say. This is not this letter is not just written to a select few of people. Now there are other letters that Paul and others write that are directed specifically to specific people. They're directed specifically to church leaders. They're Paul's letter to Timothy is written directly to Timothy. So it's for Timothy. But this is a letter that is written to the entire church at Philippi, some of, the, some of whom happen to be church leaders. So we, when we read the Bible, we want to make sure that we understand it's not just for a select few, but it is for, um, it's for everyone. And that's why... Uh, in this particular series that we started at Westway yesterday, how the Bible works, or not yesterday, we started the week before, um, we're talking about how the Bible is timeless and timely. It's not just written to a select group of people. It is written to a select group of people. It is written to a select group of people in time, but because it is timely, there are also things that it has for us. And the way that I typically describe that is the Bible... Um, was not written to us. The letter to the Philippian church was not written to us, but it is for us. There are things in it that are for us. Um, and then Paul just closes that little section, his little introduction, May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. So that's what I'm going to pray for for you today, that you would receive grace and peace from God, because he is offering that and he is giving that to you. So let's pray. Um, God, we're thankful for this brief time that we have on a Monday morning. Um, we ask that, um, that we would receive the grace and the peace that comes from your, um, from your hand, that we would receive the grace and the peace that comes from your son Jesus today. And that when we receive that, what we really mean is that we would live in that. You have given us so much. You have offered us grace, um, which is mercy, which is um, those kinds of things. But you have also given us peace. So my prayer for, for my brothers and sisters who are watching and who are going to watch this today, that they would experience the peace that comes um, from your son, Jesus that we would know and trust that that peace is greater than any other peace that we could have from any other source because you are greater than any other source. So we ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So I love you guys and I'm praying with you and for you. And I see that my daughter Katie just hopped on. So I'm going to wave to Damien, um, our grandson, who is probably wondering why I'm not waving to him. So I'm going to wave to him right now. Um, it was good to see all of you. I'm looking forward to spending far more time um, in this letter beginning tomorrow. So as I say, as we start a chapter or end a chapter, um, the best thing you can do today, well, there are lots of best things you can do today. 
A great thing you could do today is read Philippians chapter 1 for yourself. Read, read it today, um, and then you'll be ready for us to um, pick up tomorrow morning. So as you have the opportunity today, read Philippians chapter 1, and we'll catch you guys in the morning. And I love you, and I'm praying with you, and I'm praying for you. And we'll see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great rest of your day.